Okay, so it looks like our store application is running. Now I'd like to make this a little bit more interactive. Right now we have just uh, two cars and then we print them to the screen. So inside of my uh, loop here, let's, let's create a, a message to welcome the user and then get some input about what they want to do. Okay, you can see that I've created a really long line of text here. Uh, it should be easy to switch on word wrap, you would think. I want to be able to see all the lines. It's not so easy. Let me show you where to find this. Let's go to Tools, choose Options. Now I'm going to scroll down until we get to Text Editor and then All Languages, and here it is, Settings. So we want to enable word wrap. Let's click OK. There it is. So now you can see the entire uh, three lines on one line. All right, so we've got ourselves a welcome message. Now what I want to do is give an, an action. So I'm going to call this thing an integer action. And let's come up with a, uh, a, another method called choose action. And then I'm going to have a while statement. While the action does not equal zero, then we're going to go through a loop. And when we're done with the loop, we'll be done with the program. OK, as you can see, I'm starting to build a while loop. And all of this junk down here we can delete for now. Let's uh, just keep him out. And so the choose action is a new method. Let's put it right here. Let's call it uh, public int and do choose action. So this will simply return a value. OK, so it says we need to return something. All right, so I'm going to give them a choice. Let's say zero to quit. Uh, type in one to add a new car to your inventory, two to add a car to your cart, and three to check out. Okay, so next I want to receive input from the user. So I'm going to use the word choice equals, and I have to do int.parse because I am going to read a line from the text or from the keyboard, and that is interpreted as a, a string. So I want to take that string, which hopefully is a number, and interpret it as an integer, and then return it. So this opens some problems, obviously. If a person types in something besides an integer, the program will crash here when it tries to parse it. So I'm going to leave that to you for later to do some fixing on error checking. So choose action is written, but I still have an error up here where I'm trying to choose action. What's the error say? It says an object reference is required for a non-static field, method, or property. So the problem is that when I'm running a program here that's a console app, uh, there's only one instance of this allowed, so we have to do things like this. We have to change it to a static property. And so uh, the error goes away now. Okay, so now inside of the while loop, I'm going to print a test message here. It just says you chose and then the action. And then this should be a good stopping point. Let's, uh, let's run the app and see if it'll work. Okay, so now it says... Welcome, you can uh, type in a 1, 2, or a 3. You can see that it's there. So let's type in a 1, and it says you chose 1. And it's in an infinite loop. Okay, let's press Control-C to stop this, and we'll close it. So what I forgot to do is to ask for a new action. So let's go to uh, action equals choose action, and that'll give us another chance to uh, break out of the loop. So let's run it again. And hopefully we can uh, choose more than just uh, one. Okay, so here we are again. We got the app running. I'm going to type in a one. It says you chose one. Let's type in a two, three, four. I can type in any number I want. And then when I type in a zero, the program quits. So the reason why a zero quits is because the while loop keeps running until I enter a zero. Okay, so that's the basics of a while loop and the uh, the program loop. So uh, we're going to add some more functionality to it, but uh, that's a good stopping point for right now.